So I will speak about the perspectives that we have to preserve fertility in young prepubertal boys. So for the, the male side, except for adolescent children where cryopreservation of uh, semen is routinely applied, for prepubertal boys we can only preserve the stem cell of the testicle. So it implies of course that we have to take a little bit tissue of the testis to cryopreserve it and then we have the stem cell inside if the development of the testicle is normal and we can cryopreserve it in its environment which leaves us the possibilities to use it later or isolated or kept in its environment so that we can have different approaches or options to restore the fertility from that cryopreserved and stored tissue. So because we have now techniques to increase the number of spermatogonial stem cells by culture, we only need a very little piece of testicular tissue so that there is basically no limit of age except the general condition of the child and an agreement from the anesthetist. And of course, we always perform that procedure during an anesthesia the child needs for to treat his disease. The hope so far is to have a perspective of using that cryopreserved tissue containing the stem cells. There are three approaches. Or we can transplant the tissue, but this implies that there are no cancer cells in the tissue. So for example, you have some patients who have, in your country, you have thalassemia major, for example, which is a hematological disease, which is treated by bone marrow transplantation, and it needs chemotherapy, which has a very high percentage of infertility later on. In these patients, you can imagine to retransplant the tissue piece in the patient himself later and then leave the time so that the tissue develops as when it has to pass puberty normally and have then in that piece some sperm cells that we can use through IVF and ICSI later on. And then we have other approaches that we can apply but we need to study a lot more still is for patients where there is possibility that some cancer cells are in the tissue then or we have to isolate the stem cells and be sure that it's only the stem cells and no cancer cells and put them back in the testes of the patient. And then we can restore fertility by a natural way. If the quality is good enough, of course, and the amount of stem cells is good enough. Or we can decide to mature the tissue in the lab to go from the stem cell to the sperm cell, to the mature spermatozoa in the lab. And there, there is still a lot of work because so far nothing has been done with human tissue for all these approaches. Only lab studies are done, but we are quite advanced in some of these approaches to uh, start some clinical pilot studies. We, in the clinic, we apply cryopreservation of the tissue. Mm -hmm. So we have now a lot of patients who have banked their tissue and their stem cells. And now we are studying the approaches to restore the fertility from these stem cells. And this is still not applied in the clinics because we need to do more studies. Here you are speaking from other types of stem cells because here I'm speaking only uh, about uh, testis stem cells. So these are already in the direction of reproductive cells. Other stem cells such as embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells which are coming from adult tissue, other tissues, have other potentials but this is not a reproductive field at that moment. We are very far from an end when it concerns reproductive cells, for example starting from a skin cell to induce a sperm cell or an ovarian cell. This is also studies ongoing, but it's much far from the objective compared to starting from a cell which is already a testicular cell.
it's especially visible in male patients where we see that fertility over time is decreasing. You have very nice studies showing that the quality of the sperm is decreasing year by year due to the environment in which we live. So this is very clear for a, a big number of parameters of the sperm. And uh, that's why we also thought that because of geographical differences between sperm, that we had the first idea that environment could induce some infertility problems. I think we have covered quite a lot of approaches because for adolescent or adult male patients, we have sperm cryopreservation, which is clearly a routine application, nothing to learn, it works well, the results are good. For adult female patients, we have possibility to cryopreserve mature eggs and we use the same techniques as when we do a stimulation for IVF, just vitrify the eggs afterwards waiting that they are, are have a possibility to use it. And then when it comes to prepubertal patients or patients where there is no time for female to stimulate the ovaries, we can freeze ovarian tissue or for adults where it's an emergent treatment to start and we have no time to stimulate, or for children where there is no possibility to obtain mature eggs. When it comes to prepubertal boys, that's the old topic that I will discuss today, we can only freeze the stem cells and there there is a lot of work to have the different options to use that tissue later on. We are working a lot in our lab for that.